Hello, hello everyone. Hey, yeah. Uh. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. Here. Like, I don't know what time you have <laughs> there. Here in Greece, it's uh, 4 p.m. Nice. In this so moment, cute. in this moment, is Colombia. Is the 8? No, sorry, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Wow. Nice. And I have a. nine. Yes. I have, <laughs> I have 9 a.m. here. It's I, I'm streaming from Miami, and uh, on <clears throat> I'm streaming right away, like on Zoom, and also from uh, my Instagram page. But yeah, I want to remind everyone: if you want to join as a student, uh, so just go to my bio in my Instagram and click the link and there you will see it join to the uh, class. So just subscribe and you can join anytime as a student. So let's wait a couple minutes uh, for other people who want to join as well. And we will learn today meditation for free diving, meditation for static red hold. Uh, but still we're waiting for some people who want to join to not miss any um, anything important so i'm checking my live stream okay it's working i will answer questions uh both from live stream from instagram and uh, uh from zoom viewers and later we will have this recorded video uh on youtube on my channel's website i mean on my channel's channel and uh, hopefully it will be helpful and very interesting for you guys and it's very nice that you join in uh, me from all around the world. Hopefully everything is great uh, in your country uh, with this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, hopefully everyone is safe and healthy. And actually, I want to uh, tell something that meditation uh, actually helps you to um, improve your immune system. So if you meditate in every day you will be better because your immune system will be better um okay we're starting our uh class today it's it's a class about meditation for static breath hold um who of you did the static breath hold in your life who wants to share <laughs> i've done it <laughs> okay <laughs> what do you mean stare okay how was it how was it it was painful it was like uh something uh going on who can who want to share with me that information i can share if nobody else wants to talk yeah let's do it um so i started static breath holding in 2011 when i first started competing and mm -hmm. uh it was really good it went really well and i never understood why people felt pain uh, and it wasn't, it took several years for me to start feeling pain and I found out later that I was actually going into a meditative state every time I started my breath hold. Mm -hmm. And then I overtrained one year and I lost the ability to do it. So now I feel the pain and I'm trying to like reteach my brain how to go into that state again. Okay, how did you deal with the pain? So what did you do uh, when you uh, felt this pain? I didn't feel anything. Oh, you didn't feel anything, yeah? I didn't feel anything. I saw my body moving with each contraction, but I didn't feel any. I didn't feel anything. Uh, okay, I mean, like, the contractions, they were uncomfortable, right? Uh, after I lost the ability to go into the meditative state, yes, I could feel it. Oh, okay. okay. They, they, the pain builds because your lactic acid builds, so it starts to burn a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's not comfortable okay. when you do feel it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not really comfortable. No. Okay, so uh, today I'm gonna explain uh, how to use meditation in daily life and how to use it during the static breath hold. So first of all, uh, most people that I'm uh, usually talking to, they don't really know what meditation is. That's why all my courses with the meditation, I'm starting with the explanation what exactly meditation is. Because some people think that like, oh, I will lay down, I will relax, it's, it will be meditation. Or some people will think that like, okay, I will turn on the guided meditation and I will listen some 
music or something else and it will be um, and it will be fine so um, meditation is something that uh, uh, is very easy that meditation it's a tool that you can use in daily life in uh, some uh, actual meditation um, sessions for like 10 minutes one hour uh, it doesn't matter but what exactly you have to do so first of all you have to turn off your music you have to turn off all the guided meditations because it's not really what we want to achieve during the meditation you have to get a comfortable position uh, so you can see I'm sitting right now uh, like the lotus position like that right so uh, when you're doing meditation you're not supposed to support your back because you will fall asleep uh, so if you have like knee problems or something like that you can just uh, sit on the chair and uh, just don't use the back of the chair to not support your back so uh why because like when you supporting your back your brain considering is that position is a like very comfortable position um and falling asleep so your mind is you have like a sleepy mind if you supporting your back or you're laying down or something like that so meditation is the the goal of the, of the meditation is to absorb something that you not absorbing during your daily life uh, when you're not uh, aware what you're doing. So, for example, when you uh, washing your dishes, for example, yeah, you can think about your movie, about work, about anything, right? But if you will think about your movements, what exactly you're doing? you will switch to meditative state so you will meditate so what what the meditation is it uh, i mean how to explain the word meditation meditation it's focusing it's absorbing it's mindfulness and like other things that, that like you can explain what the, what the meditation word means so when you walk in if you're thinking again about problems about work about I don't know your last dive it's not a meditation but if you will switch to movements yeah so if you will think uh, how your legs moving how you're doing steps it will be meditation because you're focusing on something that you never focus in your regular life right uh, when you're doing sitting meditation the best three things that you can concentrate on it's your breathing and uh, your position so like you can feel your spine you can uh, feel like your position and the third thing it's a touching so when you're touching with your uh, uh, arms like with your uh, like for example like this yeah so this touching is also uh, the subject for meditation when you're concentrating on something else, for example, you're concentrating on music, your brain will uh, become in the destructive mode. So music is really destructive thing. So because your brain trying to recognize the music, analyze the music, sometimes you like singing or something like together with the music, it's not meditation. It's it's relaxation for sure. Maybe it's like. 1% of meditation, like because you're switching to some different mode that you're usually not switching in your regular life. But music, it's a, it's mostly, mostly destruction because music, it's a, like something nice that you like to analyze. And remember, sometimes you have this music that you heard and then you singing all the time in your brain. What's happening in your brain? Uh, your brain trying to analyze that music and put something together because in that music was something that uh, your brain didn't want to understand or something like that so um, music it's like really distracting thing so don't use music during the meditation <laughs> that's that's my my point and uh music it's uh, it's relaxation it's not meditation and relaxation and meditation is different things also because relaxation 
it's not meditation. Meditation is not relaxation. It's two different different things. Uh, do you have guys any questions about uh, meditation? Was uh, from my my point of view. Uh, do you have any questions? No questions. So now uh, you know a little bit more about meditation, or uh, it's like a little bit more clear for you what meditation is. And now uh, I want to switch to the meditation, like how to use meditation, meditation techniques during the static breath hold. So, okay, so static breath hold, it's a state when uh, your body, uh, your brain, your like everything goes to the mode when it's like everything not really uh, natural for you, right? Because you want to breathe all the time. You want to breathe, you want to live, you know, like <laughs> you want to exhale these uh, gases that uh, in your lungs um, during the breath hold. And uh, usually you... Uh, uh, so someone has a microphone, it's like something loud. Okay. Um, so during the meditation, um, what you're feeling usually? You're feeling some contractions. Some people feel actual pain. Some people have uh, really like weird bad thoughts in your brain. Some people has uh, like panic attack. Some people have uh, like anxiety or something like that during the breath hold and. Uh, Actually, I had students who was able to hold their breath just for 30 seconds. So it, it was like really like the girl, she was uh, always like panicking or something was happening that like she didn't want to hold her breath like more, longer than 30 seconds. And uh, as most of you know that uh, if you practice in a little bit breath hold, you able to hold your breath like two minutes, usually like very easy. Um, and then we started to work with the meditation techniques uh, with my student and what we did is we, we started to absorb those feelings that come into your mind while the breath hold. So when it's contractions, so most of you have the contractions first because most of you don't have like mental problems, I, I believe. <laughs> and. Uh, so when you have uh, contractions, usually it's the movements inside your uh, body. It can be contractions here, uh, here, your diaphragm. So it's, it's contractions. So contractions like moving something like because your body wants to exhale all this like uh, air that you holding, yeah, uh, to refill it, yeah. <laughs> so you need to concentrate on that feeling on the contractions. So you just have to focus on what exactly you're feeling. So you have contractions here, you're absorbing this movement. You have contractions here, you're absorbing this movement. You have contractions there, you're absorbing that movement. And uh, you will realize that uh, when you're absorbing those movements that you usually never absorbing, because you're trying just to relax, just to be calm, just to hold as long as I can. But if you will just uh, absorb this feeling, you will be able to understand that it's nothing dangerous. It's not really painful. It's just muscles contracting. And actually, I uh, started to control these contractions during the meditation because when you can absorb those contractions. You can also stop those contractions if you want to. So it, this is like after like practicing maybe, I don't know, a few months, uh, if you will absorb those feelings, you will be able to stop the contractions. You will be able to stop this discomfort feelings. Uh, if you have, for example, some bad thoughts in your brain, uh, here I'm using also meditation technique uh, that helps you to clean your mind 
that helps you to remove these bad thoughts from your mind. Um, what is that? Who knows? Maybe some of you knows that. No? Okay. Uh, you just can use mental labeling. What is mental labeling? You have these thoughts and you want to stop them. And you tell them to yourself mentally. Uh, thinking, 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 and these thoughts, they go in a way. For example, you, I don't know, you, uh, then during the breath hold, probably you don't want to sing the song, but like during the meditation, like you do, if you do a meditation, like for like 30 minutes, for example, you're starting to sing song, you just can tell yourself, you do use mental labeling, singing, singing, singing. So mental labeling, you can use anytime when you have some problems during the breath hold. So you can absorb the feeling, but if you can absorb the, this feeling, you can mental use mental labeling, for example, contractions, contractions, contractions. And it will happen, the magic will happen. Those bad feelings that you're absorbing, they will go away. You just have to focus on them more and they will go away, easy. Another meditation technique that I'm using during the static breath hold is scanning of your body. Probably you already heard about scanning. So scanning is uh, you're going mentally around your body, clockwise or otherwise, it doesn't matter. Uh, just like focusing on each part of your body. For example, here muscles relaxed. Okay, cool. Here, this muscle relaxed. Okay, nice. This muscle relaxed, nice. And you're going through all your body, your diaphragm, your legs, your fingers, everything. You can go through each part of your body to feel this relaxation, to relax each muscle, to uh, remove any tensing, like tense feeling inside your body, anything. Yeah? And, uh, uh, this is also meditation technique when you scanning and absorbing all these feelings inside you that helps you to hold your breath longer. Also, it's kind of distractions, distraction for your brain. When you meditate and when you're concentrating on something, your brain stops thinking that, oh, I need to inhale or exhale, doesn't matter. And uh, your brain a little bit distracted because of the meditation. And yes, uh, as we heard previously, the meditation helps you to, uh, in meditation, meditation, meditative state helps you to uh, not feel any unpleasant feelings. So everything becomes pleasant, actually, because you learn about your body, you learn how to absorb all these feelings, and you actually hold in your breath longer. Okay, so this is the main uh, technique about uh, like I mean about the meditation for uh, static breath hold. And uh, now I want to hear any questions from you guys and uh, Instagram as well. If you wanna, if you have any questions, please ask the question. Do you and usually visualize the end of your dive? During the static breath hold, I'm not using visualization at all because visualization, it's not really meditation. And uh, visualization actually using your uh, oxygen during the static breath hold. So if, you vis if you're thinking too much, vis visualiz visualizing is uh, it's a lot of thinking actually because you're creating this picture, like how you doing something and this visualization visualization is uh, using your oxygen but if your question about visualization before the dive yes I do visualization visualization before my dive yes I'm using this technique uh, but today we're talking about meditation <laughs> okay uh, I have a question on Instagram let's see can you meditate in any situation or always need uh, to be silent in a silent room? 
it's very good question because uh, let me put okay um, this question it's very interesting a uh, very good question uh, thank you for this question so you can do meditation anytime anywhere uh, like literally anywhere literally anytime just some exceptions if you somewhere in a in a situation when you have to be aware for example you're driving you can't use meditation during driving if you walk in somewhere on the street where the car can hit you you're not using any meditation technique because you have to be aware you have to be safe but if you're in a safe place while walking for example in the park or somewhere like on the beach you just focus on your walking and you already switch into meditative state because you're absorbing something that you're not absorbing in your regular life just one step another step one step another step it's easy meditation if you will start to observe rising pulling forward step it will be three movements that you're absorbing from each leg when you're walking and it will be walking meditation actually how um, uh, Buddhists using walking meditation in their practicing uh, it's called Vipassana meditation if you don't know that so if you uh, for example eating your food even if it's music around doesn't matter you just uh, don't focus on the music uh, you're eating apple for example yeah and when you absorbing taste of the apple it's one type of meditation when you absorbing movements of your jaw it's another type of meditation and when you're absorbing uh, the movements uh, like how your jaw move me, move, moving how you're swallowing is the best way to meditate so you can meditate with each meal you can meditate in the gym uh, hope it, the gyms will be open soon because like we need to work out <laughs> Um, in the gym, if you will concentrate on your muscles, so, so you're pulling uh, something, you're absorbing the muscle, and this is already meditation. But if you're thinking about your work, about some problems during the workout, you're not meditating, you're just doing workout. And meditation, it's, you, can, you can use it anywhere, anytime. Okay, and... It looks like I have uh, two more questions on Instagram, and but I want to uh, hear any anyone from Zoom uh, want to ask me a question. Yeah, um, about the mental labeling. Uh, yep. You said mental labeling of contractions, and you're gonna mental like label them. Usually, you, we we label things in meditation that should go away at some point, but contractions aren't gonna stop throughout the uh, breath hold. So, but you said they're gonna go away. So, what exactly do you mean by that? So contractions, they are coming and going all the time. They not, they never, uh, uh, so like if you have contractions that like never stop, probably you just need to stop your breath hold because it may be a little bit dangerous for you, yeah? But contractions usually like in my case when I'm using it, so they coming, contra I'm contracting, I'm focusing on contractions and they actually going away and they coming back again so it's it's not constant so i don't have contractions all the time uh a lot of them i have a lot of contractions uh on the end of the breath hold when like i'm coming to my limit it's like about seven minutes so far and uh and that point yeah i have like very bad contractions and like nothing helps no, no meditation nothing and then i'm just stopping my breath hold because you can actually black out if you're not stopping right and that's why you also have to absorb your feelings and because you will understand when to stop because if nothing helps it's better to stop <laughs> okay and mental labeling also it's if your contractions uh, in your case not going away uh, mental labeling will help you to concentrate more on those contractions so it's another tool like just just to be more focused on the contractions okay Okay, so I'm going to read the question from Instagram. Uh, here, the question is the meditation during the dive or before the dive uh, 
for preparation. Uh, so, if, uh, so if I understood correctly, if I'm doing the meditation before my dive or during the dive uh, or for preparation. Uh, so meditation is very helpful before your dives. Uh, if you're doing just like, I don't know, five minutes uh, meditation, uh, you, will, you will have better dive. Um, but sometimes it's hard to perform so like if you if you will do meditation just before your like training session it will be very nice because because you will be more focused you will be like more aware of what you're doing uh when i'm competing i'm doing meditation every time before my dive on the platform if you saw my videos uh from the competition competitions uh you can see me like meditating right before my uh deep dives during that meditation i uh it's like a few parts of meditation so first part i'm just calming down and doing just regular meditation uh not thinking about anything just about my body about my breathing then i'm switching to uh, visual visualization of my dive uh, and then other techniques that not really meditation so for example deconcentration during right before the dive and uh, during the dive, I'm using also meditation, but uh, focusing on those parts of my body that I need to focus during my dive. Okay, but the, today we're talking about breath hold. So for meditation, for diving, for competition, I will explain in the next sessions. So, and I have one more question on Instagram. Let me see. Uh, Apart from mental uh, labeling, do you use any other techniques to reduce or stop contractions? Uh, so mental labeling is helping you to concentrate more, to reduce painful or different like bad feelings. But you're using mental labeling only when you can't uh, concentrate. You know, like when you just can focus on the feelings you don't need mental labeling when you're focusing on your contractions when you're focusing on uh what you're doing so you will be able to reduce these contractions without mental labeling you just have to practice a little bit so you can just uh today you can just uh lay down in your bed hold your breath and absorb your feelings uh when you when you hold in your breath it's the, the best way actually to lay down because in this case, if you will have any uh, problems like a blackout, like like little blackout, you will be on the bed, you will be okay. Uh, but uh, don't uh, be confused because meditation, actual meditation, you're doing only in the sitting position, but breath hold, you can do in the lay, uh, uh, laying down in your bed in the most comfortable position that you can have because during the breath hold, it's like almost no chances that you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> it's not that comfortable to sleep without breathing. And um, just absorb your feelings, try mental labeling, uh, try to focus on your contractions. And also you can, you can use mental labeling or you can like tell yourself mentally that like, okay, contraction, go away. Yeah, and try to remove your contraction. It's possible, it's hard, it's, it's possible. And maybe if you will practice, uh, practice that like a few times, you will understand what I mean. So when you have these big contractions, you can reduce them, just thinking about the reducing of the contractions, or you can fully stop them. So you just have to be focused on that feeling. And I have one more question, I think. Let me see. Oh no, it's just uh, someone asking, how are you? Uh, I'm good, I'm fine <laughs> on the live stream. Um, okay. uh, I have one question. I yes. have one question too. Uh, um, how much do you think you gain in time, like uh, a second or minute with the, using the meditation technique that you gave? So, so how it's improving during the breath hold, you mean? Yes, 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 yes. So, um, when you... Like the improvement is really good, so I can tell that uh, before I, I was using 
just the breath hold. I didn't think about like how to improve uh, my breath hold. And I was holding my breath like three minutes, 3.30. And it was like, wow, 3.30, cool. Uh, it's like amazing. But then I was trying to understand like, okay, why I can't hold my breath longer than 3.30? What's, what's going on? And I started to analyze and then uh, I started to, like I, I was practicing meditation a lot before uh, free diving. And then I'm like, oh, I know meditation. Like why I can't use meditation during the breath hold? And I tried and right away I have five minutes. So it was 3.30 without meditation, five minutes right away using meditation techniques without any special preparations, nothing. So then I started to be more focused, more meditation techniques during the static breath hold. And now I'm about like seven minutes. So it's it really helpful because when you're not using meditation techniques during the static breath hold, your brain just worried about your comfort, about your um, pain, about contractions. And that's why your brain become more um, distracted, like, and like, I mean, not distracted, like more panicking and like uh, anxious and stuff like that. So you just want like stop and you don't want to uh, do the breath hold. So other, other techniques also very helpful, like CO2 tables and other things uh, to improve your tolerance to CO2 and everything like that. But it's a little bit different topic. So any other questions you have, guys? Uh, yes, um, about do you, well, strictly for static breath holds, do you hyperventilate before you uh, do static breath holds just to take off the edge of the contractions to have them later to be more relaxed? Uh, personally, I do not uh, hyperventilate. Um, Never. So no, no, not before the dives, not before the static breath hold. I do some packing to have a little bit more air in my lungs, but I'm not hyperventilating at all um, because I don't know. Sometimes, like some people think that hyperventilating may be useful for static breath hold. I still uh, think that hyperventilating in any situation is kind of not okay. Uh, but maybe it's uh, so like maybe some professionals uh, using that hyperventilation for to increase your to boost your system uh, for breath hold. But I want to remind everyone, please don't hyperventilate with ventilate before any dive. We don't want to have blackouts. OK. <laughs> OK. Any other questions? No questions. OK, so now we're going to practice a little bit so you will understand what we learned today so right now i want you to uh, uh sit in a like comfortable position and do big inhale uh so when you're inhaling you filling up your so uh, fill up your uh, lungs with the diaphragm with the uh, back parts i mean like back part and the side parts so like your uh, filling up your lungs like like this and like that yeah so like try mentally uh, to be focused on how you fill up your lungs not just like <sighs> just uh, so first you when you're inhaling your diaphragm moving forward then uh, your sides and it's like and your back a little bit will go uh, back and at the end, you can even use a little bit of your shoulders to fill up your lungs fully. After that, just hold your breath till first contraction, absorb this first contraction. And after that, I want your feedback. What did you feel? OK, so let's do it now. I will do it together with you guys. When you uh, inhale, make sure you're relaxed, your shoulders went down, you're relaxed. I'm going to continue holding my breath.
if any one of you have already contractions and you absorb this feeling, if you want to ask the question or tell me something, just do it after your contraction. I'm not uh, gonna wait for my contraction. It will be like in three minutes probably. <laughs> I will reply in uh, Russian language uh, to my followers on Instagram. Uh, да, я знаю русский язык, я знаю украинский язык, но сегодня сессия у меня на английском, поэтому uh, если вы не знаете английский, то в следующий раз. So it's, if anyone want to share your feelings with us, you're welcome. So when you have contractions, just focus on your contractions, focus on your feelings, what's coming, and your breath hold will be much more comfortable and longer. So, uh, probably nobody want to ask the question. When you're, um, do you sometimes force your contractions? Like, or do you wait for them to come on their own? Sometimes you just feel like the, having the next contraction would be nice to have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I never forced my contractions because for me personally, uh, no contractions is better feeling, but like you actually, you can increase your contractions mentally. You can reduce them mentally if you pra practice in the meditation and like controlling of your contractions. So if you want to increase them like on purpose, yeah, I think it's possible. If it's, is it correct? Uh, did I understood correctly your question? Well, I think for me, the issue is that until the first contractions come, it takes a long time. Like I, I already feel anxious mentally. And then when the first contraction comes, it's a bit of a release because I know, okay, now my body is actually reacting to what's happening. So, I, and then after that, sometimes you feel like, oh, the next one is just around the corner, but it's not coming. So I'm wondering if you have a similar feeling and then just, you know, give a little bit of a push so it comes and more controlled instead of rolling over you, you don't have control over it. Yeah, you're right. And uh, it's also a good point because uh, if you want to know that your body like reacting and you have these contractions, it's also the uh, uh, target like that you can absorb during your breath hold. So when you don't have anything, sometimes you're thinking, oh, what should I absorb? Because I don't have any, like any feelings. Like I just like holding my breath, everything fine. Uh, so like, yeah, may maybe like for some people uh, you need some unpleasant feeling to be more focused on that what's going on so like in my case i like more uh when i don't have any anything so it's just like empty yeah <laughs> empty space and uh okay any other questions if we don't have uh, any questions yeah yes i i have one question uh, like it's feel different, like you're doing uh, dry static and uh, static in the water. Mm -hmm. So yes. I think it's kind of easier in the water, even for meditation. But when you're doing dry, when the contraction come, it's very strong. I mean, and it's like, it's not like it's going and coming back. So when it starts, it's really like present and mm -hmm. for a while. So I feel more difficult to 
to release or to do the meditation at this time. So I don't know yeah. if you can do something more in static or any other advice for dry. Okay, uh, I understood the question. So yes, it's a very good question because uh, in the pool or in the water, when your face uh, touching the water, your mammalian dye reflex start working. And when your mammalian dye reflex start working, you have much better experience with the breath hold, with the dive, with everything. And yes, of course, when you holding your breath, just like a dry breath hold, like in the bed or whatever. Um, in this case, your mammalian dye reflex didn't start working. It's not working at all. Of course, you can. Some some people they put their face before static breath hold, dry breath hold in the in the cold water, like just like using the bowl or something, and then they doing breath hold. It, it's it's much more comfortable. But like you can do it like if you really wanna like improve your dry breath hold, and you don't really need to do that. So I don't know. Like uh, I don't have any like. I never, I never tried by myself. I know some people they did that, but you can you can do it if you want. Uh, so you can just use uh, cold water on, or even ice. You can put ice on your face and it will, it will work as well. Your mammalian dye reflex will work, but it will work a little bit less than in actual water because in water you're you have more much more receptors like on your body that turning on your uh, mammalian dye reflex and. Uh, difference usually uh when you're doing static dry static breath hold you can hold your breath for example two minutes if you doing the same thing with the mammalian dye reflex turned on it will be like sometimes twice longer because it's more comfortable it's less contractions it's less uh other other things that uh, you don't really like in your static breath hold and the dry breath hold but dry breath hold helps you to improve your breath hold in general so practicing the static breath hold dry breath hold <clears throat> will help you to hold your breath much longer after that anytime Okay, any other questions? And, and so if I if, if if I don't want to put some water in the face, that means I really want to work on this sensation. Or just when she comes, she just doesn't go. Like, not water. Uh, I, I, I didn't hear just, you the fir first, the first uh, what did you say? Uh, you... I, you, you say that you can put some water or ice to like to, to have a like, kind of small mammalian reflex, okay? Yeah, or yeah. not not to do it so the point is if i don't i would like not to do it and just work on this sensation we just come more or less at the same moment and we just is very strong and uh, how can i deal with this sensation on dry without putting any extra tips like uh, water or something more with the meditation uh, so you can you just uh, what I mean? yeah yeah I understand so uh, you have like really big contractions you have really big discomfort so if you will learn how to live with that without any additional tools you will be better uh, you will hold your breath better uh, in the water so you just uh, you just try to absorb those feelings absorb those unpleasant uh, movements those big contractions hold your breath shorter you don't need to hold your breath like five minutes or something like that just hold your breath 30 seconds one minute one and a half minutes uh absorb those really bad contractions try to reduce them time to time not right away try to do few sessions for example 10 sessions and do the goal to reduce those bad contractions so first for example three sessions you will have breath hold for like one minute 30 seconds with the bed contractions and then you will learn how to reduce them usually uh, using the focusing and meditation and next three sessions you can do already for example two minutes and then next three sessions you can do even longer just uh, when you're practicing 
from a little bit then longer 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 you will hold your breath better and you will reduce those bad feelings uh, more efficient just uh, when you be more aware about those feelings okay any other questions Um, yeah, on, on Instagram, the people can't hear the questions from the Zoom. Uh, that's because I'm using uh, earbuds, so everyone on the Zoom can hear me properly. But you can join any time to the Zoom session using the invitation link. <laughs> Do it next time. Okay. Any other questions? If if it's no questions, we will finish for today, and. Uh, Recorded uh, lesson will be available on, on the YouTube, on the Mo Channels YouTube. And uh, uh, I will do a few more sessions about meditation, about breath hold, about uh, diving for, uh, about improving your um, uh, equalization for the deep dives, like your, <clears throat> uh, how to improve the equalization for deep dives and stuff like that. So just uh, uh, follow me on Instagram and you subscribe to my uh, uh, channel and I will, I will send the email updates as well. So if, if no any questions... I just then, have one, yeah. one last question. Yes. Yes, I have one. I, <laughs> it's not about m meditation properly, but about static. Uh, I have the more or less... Uh, I can change some time, but more or less, it's always the same time my contraction happened around 1 minute 50 seconds. But it's the same when I am on dry or on, on water. And I don't understand why, because you should have this mammalian reflex or the mammalian reflex just affects you like after the first contraction. Uh, so, so you, you, you did I understood, understood correctly? You have the same time on a dry breath hold and the, in the water, right? Not, not the breath hold. No, the first contraction or the first discomfort. Oh, the first discomfort happening at the same time. Oh, I have the same. Yeah, I, I, I have. But the after same. it's not happening the same. I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. It's just the first yeah. time is the same. After uh, on dry is very strong and difficult, and uh, on water is different. But the start is almost around the same timing. Yeah, I have I have almost the same uh, thing. So I my first contraction usually about two thirty three minutes, and for the static breath hold, I mean for the dry breath hold and for the uh, breath hold in the water, it's almost the same always for the first uh, try. For the second try, yes, it's different. Uh, so usually on this on this dry breath hold, I have approximately the same, uh, and in the water, it's usually longer. It's usually like maybe like three, three thirty. So it's just a little bit longer if I'm doing like second or third breath hold in the water. So like and the static, yeah, it's uh, it's different. Uh, I mean, static uh, dry breath hold, it's a little bit different. But yeah, it's it's almost the same timing uh, for me as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> okay. Uh, last chance to ask the question. If no questions, we're gonna finish today. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Join for uh, my next classes and uh, follow uh, Malchanov's free diving to learn every day from the best free divers in the world. Everyone, bye. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining. Have a nice you. weekend to all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye, you. bye bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Спасибо большое, что вы смотрели здесь. В следующий раз присоединяйтесь к моему Zoom аккаунту. Next time please join the Zoom account and uh, thank you. Bye everyone.